one such incident, two officers threw a 15-year-old Latino boy against a bus stop pole, held the back of his neck, and handcuffed him after he asked to call his mother. What were you doing going to those trucks? Huh? What were you going in that truck for? While on patrol, the officer saw the boy briefly look inside a truck at a car dealership's parking lot during business hours, then leave to catch the bus. The officers followed the boy onto the bus and ordered him off. He walked up to it, looked inside, opened the other door, went to the other side and just walked away. Oh, because I had to catch the bus. Have a seat. You have no idea, no ID on you? I do have it. What? I do have it. Where is it? DOJ wrote, the boy listened to the officers and followed all of their orders. you have any weapons on you? Let me pick, pick up your backpack. Because I told you to take off your backpack. But when one officer demanded the boy take off his backpack, the boy looked up at him and asked, why? The officer's response was aggressive and demeaning. Because I told you to. Stand up and put your hands on top of your head. Turn around. Come on, Mom. The officer then ordered the boy to stand up, turn around, and place his hands on his head. The boy started to do as he was told, but then looked down at his phone in his hand and asked whether he could call his mother. The officer immediately grabbed him, held his neck, and slammed him into the pole of a bus stop. Stop resisting. I'm not resisting at all, man. The DOJ said the boy's hands remained above his head until officers roughly cuffed him. Sit down. Sit. The officers also questioned the boy while he was handcuffed without informing him of his Miranda rights. They performed a warrantless and unlawful search on his backpack. They later released the boy, but lectured him that the entire encounter was his own fault. Now, a couple of final things about this incident. Phoenix PD found those officers' actions were in policy, but in these records released by Phoenix PD, it says one of them received some sort of coaching. Also, as you just saw, the officers didn't read the boy his Miranda rights. That's part of a pattern. The DOJ report says Phoenix officers often question children without telling them about their right to remain silent. Quote, Phoenix PD has a Miranda warnings card that translates the Miranda warnings into child appropriate language and gives children the option of asking for a parent before questioning. But we reviewed multiple incidents in which Phoenix PD officers did not use the card and ignored the requirements of Miranda altogether. Now, Miranda rights come from the 1966 U.S. Supreme Court case, Miranda v. Arizona. And do you know what police department violated Ernesto Miranda's rights leading to the landmark ruling? Not ironically, it was Phoenix PD. I'm investigator Dave Biscoving, ABC 15, Arizona. Good morning and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m. bright and early right here at home on the range. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. You know, I really appreciate it. We're going to start our day out with one of the worst of the worst bad apples. Just kidding. This is the kind of bad apple I like to report on first thing in the morning. This Patterson cop arrested and accused of shoplifting at Marshall's. Oh, no. It's going to be great, you guys. A city cop named Officer of the Month. Oh, goodness. Dang it. I feel bad for him. Last September was accused of shoplifting from a Patterson department store where he was working an extra duty job providing security. Oh, sticky fingers. Jury de Zeus. De, De Jesus Rodriguez, 25, has been charged with third-degree crime of official misconduct and a shoplifting disorderly person's offense, said Passaic County Prosecutor Camilla Valdez in a press release. All right. De Jesus Rodriguez allegedly stole several items of clothing from the Marshalls and Patterson's Center City Mall. Not cool, De Jesus. Authorities said the officer is accused of taking the clothes with a retail value of $66.97 into an employee bathroom at the store, dang it, where he removed their packaging and price tags and later left the store without paying for them. Mm -hmm. Valdez press release did not say exactly when the alleged crime took place. De Jesus Rodriguez was hired as a Patterson police officer in January 2022. Makes a salary of $40,924 a year. Come on, De Jesus. What's going on, bro? The city normally suspends officers accused of crimes without pay for 30 days 
and then, as required by Patterson's police union contract, places them on paid administrative leave while the charges are pending. So that's what's going on with him. Okay, did Jesus Rodriguez won the Officer of the Year, uh, Officer of the Month, for his role in responding to a domestic call in which a suspect carrying a gun loaded with 18 bullets was disarmed? Oh my goodness! You need to check the back of his cruiser, see if he maybe swiped. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's mean. That's mean. I feel bad for you, Jesus Rodriguez. The Officer of the Month awards were started in 2023 as an effort to showcase the work of city cops. Yay! After the New Jersey Attorney General's Office seized control of the Patterson Police Department in March of this year. All right. These charges against Jesus Rodriguez stemmed from an investigation by the Prosecutor's Public Integrity Unit with assistance from the Patterson's Internal Affairs Division. All righty then. I wish we had a picture of old De Jesus Rodriguez, but we don't. Okay. All right. No halo for that guy, that's for sure. All right. Satter White, Chief Satter White acknowledged that there was failure to the top, at, at the top, really, for years. That's right, Danny. Satter White started his presentation by speaking to the issues of HPD being understaffed before ultimately admitting the entire leadership team at HPD missed the scandal time and time again. Satter White spoke for over an hour, taking several questions from council members as to how something like this could happen. A code that was not only implemented as policy in 2016, but one that Satter White admits officers were trained on in terms of how to use it. Satterwhite also confirming what KPRC2 Investigates first reported in April that sex assault cases involving children had been suspended. Afterwards, the interim chief and the mayor held a news conference. The biggest fail again is that there was no follow up. There was no checking in. There was no looking back to say what actually is going on uh, and is it the right thing to do and how do we fix it? If we had, you know, because this could have been fixed many years ago, and it's unfortunate that it did not until now. I'm still shocked, having worked with HPD, city leadership, the, the employee groups, that this could exist for so many years and not become public. I'm just shocked. Now, as I first reported back in May, the entire investigation was reopened because of integrity questions that were raised regarding a letter that Executive Assistant Chief Sandra Hatcher wrote to then Chief Troy Finner that helped launch the investigation. Multiple law enforcement sources confirmed to KPRC to investigates that Hatcher was not truthful in that letter. Again, this is the letter that was used to launch the investigation. During the news conference with Chief Satterwhite, I asked for the status of Hatcher since she was not in attendance today. She is a member of the Houston Police Department, an active member of the Houston Police Department right now. Is she still an executive assistant chief? She will not be a part of the executive team. Has she been demoted? The, she is still making decisions. And in respect to her, I'm letting her make those decisions. And she has some time to do that. We, of course, are not done investigating this scandal. We'll have more coming up over the course of the next 24 hours. Live in the newsroom, Mario Diaz, KPRC2 Investigates. I do hate that these type of bad apples have to appear on every show, it seems. But you know what? You've got to know if you got the diddler living next door. All right. The former Stallion Springs officer has been arrested in Maine for alleged X crimes. That's him. James Walter Best Jr. making James Walter Best Sr. proud. That's right. Penobscot County Sheriff's Office. All right. Let's see what this goofball has gotten himself into. Charges for sex crimes that may have gone unseen for years. Eyewitness News investigative reporter Leslie Valle delved into the case of the former officer. And we do want to warn you that details of this story may be disturbing for some. On the morning of August 19th, James Walter Best Jr. would be arrested by Penobscot law enforcement at his house in Maine for a sex offense warrant from Kern County. It was only a matter of time that an eyewitness news viewer would call our tip line to let us know Best Jr. was a former police officer with the Stallion Springs Police Department. The department is located in the Tehachapi Mountains, about an hour away from Bakersfield. 
After several calls and fact-checking, Eyewitness News was able to confirm that Best Jr. was in fact a former cop with the department. However, Stallion Springs officials were not able to tell us for how long he was employed. He faces several charges such as continuous sexual child abuse, several charges of lewd act with a child, and a charge described in short where the victim was unable to resist sexual assault because they were intoxicated. This isn't his only run-in with law enforcement either. The Kern County Court website reveals back in 2020, he was on probation for misappropriation of public funds and grand theft. Through public information, we also found that at some point, Best Jr. moved from California to Maine. Through court docs, we discovered the current arrest he's facing is for alleged sex crimes against one of his children and that it may have gone unnoticed for several years. They reported it started when they were nine years old and continued until they were of age. The details are so explicit and disturbing, we decided not to share the entirety of the reports that were made against Best Jr. Docs revealed that Best Jr. and his child were interviewed by Kern County law enforcement officials back in October of 2023, where Best was confronted with the allegations. The reports state that he kept saying he was sorry for the things he had done and he never denied the allegations to officials. Officers reported that he did admit to certain sex acts he was accused of but continued to deny a majority by saying that he didn't remember. Officials planned for Best Jr. to be extradited back to Kern County but they told us he's fighting to stay in Maine. Well, there's more to that story. You don't just move all the way across the country unless you're really running from something, all right? So, Best Junior, you made Best Senior proud, making it right here on the Bad Apple Report. All right, and without missing a beat, not even a beat off, this Vermont cop is facing a charge of aggravated assault during an arrest. Okay, and look at his goofy partner. Uh, he's looking at the camera. I think there's a camera on us. Uh, George. And George is down there. Man, do something, bro. Check out the look on George's face down there. Okay, so George is the bad cop down there with the stripes. And he's got a sleeve tattoo like a typical bad cop would. And his partner over here, this knucklehead rookie partner, he's probably training this idiot over here. This is how you do egregious things and get away with it, buddy. Okay, or so he thought. St. Johnsbury, Vermont, a Vermont police officer is facing a charge of aggravated assault for his use of force while attempting to arrest a man during an altercation in St. Johnsbury in May. Okay, St. Johnsbury Police Sergeant George Johnson did not have sufficient cause to stop John Stetzel, age 35, who was walking on a street near a bridge on May 10th. State police said a physical altercation ensued and Johnson used excessive force on Stetzel, who was taken to the hospital for treatment of significant injuries. Okay, Stetzel was later released from the hospital, police said. Police did not provide any details on the type of force allegedly used on Stetzel's injuries. Hmm. Allegedly, there's a camera. And look at this goofball witness partner right there. Let's find out. So Stetzel originally was charged with multiple violations. Oh. So Stetzel, the guy on the ground, is charged with violations after he got his butt kicked when it, while he was walking. Okay, the Caledonia County Prosecutor's Office dismissed the charges. Oh, that's nice. After the review of Johnson's body camera footage, police said. Well, then they should have just immediately arrested Johnson. Then am I right? Caledonia County State's Attorney Jessica Zelensky told the St. Johnsbury Police Chief that she's very concerned Oh, about Johnson's use of force. Oh, the chief referred the case to the Vermont State Police for an independent investigation. Oh, no. Is something going to happen? I don't know. Zaleski recused herself and asked the Grand Isle County State's Attorney to review the matter for criminal charges. Okay. Johnson was issued a citation. Is that it? George Johnson, the bad cop with the sleeve tattoo that roughed that guy up and sent him to the hospital. And then the charges were dropped because he was obviously lying his butt off on the camera. Yeah, that guy. He got a citation, you guys, to his attorney. You. Yeah. Okay, police said he was scheduled to be arraigned next month. Oh, maybe the citation means something I don't know. <laughs> All right. His attorney said Thursday that she has no comment on the case. Well, let's just hope George Johnson, well, we know what we hope happens to him. He's a bad apple. He made it on the Bad Apple Report, and we're going to follow up with that guy. All right, on with the show. Mama's 
Don't let your babies grow up to be bad cops or your grandkids' teeth will fall right out on your floor. That's right. This deputy beat his adopted son and let his daughter's teeth turn black from decay, Florida cops say. Hmm. Nice job, deputy. All right. A deputy accused of beating his son and allowing his daughter's teeth to turn black by not giving her a toothbrush now faces charges of child neglect in Florida. He's no longer with the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. Oh, what are they going to do without him? McClatchy News contacted the ex-deputy's defense attorney August 8th and did not immediately receive a response. The 40-year-old husband and 39-year-old wife each faced two counts of child neglect without great bodily harm and two counts of parental failure to require school attendance, records show. The husband additionally is charged with child abuse without great bodily harm. McClatchy News is not identifying the couple to avoid identifying their children. On July 28th, deputies responded to a church after receiving a report that someone had told the preacher he was being abused by his father, according to an arrest affidavit. When deputies spoke with him, he said he worried no one would believe him because his father was a deputy. But he told investigators his dad was historically physically abusive. Since he was adopted in 2017, he's had no formal education instead of mowed lawns. Uh, instead, he's just mowed lawns, and his father kept all the money he earned to buy groceries for the family, he told deputies. Whoa. He said he would rather be homeless than continue living there and provided photos of his injuries, according to investigators. The father adamantly denied physically punishing his children, and he takes some of his son's money from mowing lawns to replace items he has broken in the home, deputies said. He said he also uses some of the money to buy groceries, but denied Taking all of it, deputies said. When investigators, vi- when investigators visited the home where three school-aged children lived, they said they noticed one of the children had obvious decay on her front teeth. She said she doesn't brush her teeth because she doesn't have a toothbrush, but added her father has been saving for a new toothbrush and to fix her teeth, according to deputies. Goodness. Photographs of the children's teeth revealed one of them had four front teeth that were black from decay and a large pit in one of her canines, deputies said. The former deputy who worked for the Escambia County Sheriff's Office for a little over two years told investigators he had medical and dental insurance. The husband and wife are also accused of failing to comply with educational standards for homeschooling in Escambia County. One of the children said, She did one of two hours of work a day under the supervision of her mother, who traveled often for work, deputies said. The girls didn't know what grade she was in. Oh, the girl didn't. She didn't know what grade she was in and never taken an assessment test by a licensed teacher, investigators said. Hmm. The couple was booked in jail. August 3rd, records show. Okay. Escambia County is in the western part of Florida Panhandle, Pensacola, near the county seat. All right. That's the story on that deputy and his wife. And, uh. Dang, that's some pretty grotesque allegations there, buddy. All right, but something we'd expect from a deputy. That's true. Okay, there's always one bad apple to come along to try to ruin our day, and that's this guy, Ritter. Okay, former Tangahepaho Parish deputy arrested on child stuff and malfeasance charges, okay? A former Tanga Paho Parish Sheriff's deputy was arrested on Thursday after an investigation uncovered evidence of child stuff. The Hammond Police Department arrested 34-year-old Brent Ritter, who has been booked with one count of possession of child stuff and one count of malfeasance in office. Hammond detectives were conducting an unrelated investigation involving Ritter when they discovered child stuff on his electronic device belonging to him. Well, what was that other investigation about, guys? The discovery led to further action, and with the assistance of the Louisiana Bureau of Investigation Office Attorney General, search warrants were executed at Ritter's residence. Uh Uh-oh, Ritter. Additional electronic devices were seized for examination. In response to the findings, Tangapaho Sheriff Gerald Sticker placed Ritter on administrative leave and required him to surrender his uniforms, gear, and vehicle. Now, that's what we want to see, guys. We want to see a video of that. 
That's some viral stuff right there, fellas. Okay, Sheriff Sticker later terminated Ritter, who had been served with the Sheriff's Office. Oh, he has served there for six years. Ooh, creepy Ritter, allegedly. 34-year-old knucklehead. All right, that's it, folks. Our Monday Bad Apple Report is complete. And I'm going to go find some more Bad Apples for tomorrow. And we'll see you right back here at 7.30 a.m., bright and early. Have a great day, folks.